Well, good morning. I'm up uh, a little late today. Let's see what time it is. Almost 8 o'clock. Got up in the night. Been reading a book called The Day Christ Died. I forget who the author is, but it's an old book that I had found. So I've been enjoying reading that one. I can't sleep at night. And uh, my goodness, man, I overslept by a couple of hours easy today. But it's a good cold morning. I want to make for a nice study. After my study, I'm going to go cast me a few for a few fish out there. It's going to be a good day today. Got good weather. I'm going to take a peek into Proverbs 18 this morning. As it reads, oh, and this uh, book is my uh, living Bible paraphrase because this book is so uh, uh, so yummy at the way it paraphrases um, the original text and changes it to words that uh, that speaks directly to the modern brain, or I should say, speaks more directly to the modern brain. So I enjoy reading this book. I've been really enjoying it. Uh, 18. The selfish man quarrels against every sound principle of conduct by demanding his own way. Uh, this is a perfect picture of uh, carnal mindedness, of self will. This is the thing that uh, you know, we are, we're trying to grow away from when we seek God. A rebel doesn't care about the facts. All he wants it to do is yell. I've got uh, I've got uh, several people in my life that are atheists, uh, old friends from the old days, and boy, I tell you, uh, they don't want to hear reason. Uh, they they all they want to hear is something to get in an argument about about God. Their arguments always come down to God, and no matter if they start out in an argument of politics or whatever, they always seem to end up on an argument about God. A rebel doesn't care about the facts. All he wants to do is yell. Sin brings disgrace, and it is a very disgraceful thing for a person. A wise man's words express deep streams of thought. A um, wise man, somebody believes in God, they're looking for tomorrow, not just for the answers for today. It is wrong for a judge to favor the wicked and condemn the innocent. It happens quite a lot these days. I remember a few years ago there was a guy that didn't want to build a cake. He was a baker and didn't want to make a cake for some gay guys that were getting married. And he stood on his constitutional grounds uh, to, um, to not build that cake. And it costed the man his business, his home. By the time he sank all the money he had into his defense, he lost everything. But at the end, if the first judges would have done what the last judge did, which was uh, deem the case uh, constitutional protection on his part, uh, he would not have lost his home and his uh, business. But the first judges didn't. And they kept siding with against the law. <clears throat> they were siding with... Uh, men of poor moral conduct because they wanted to uh, the world to be in that poor moral conduct condition because that's where they were comfortable. So it's a, it's a bad thing when a judge does that. A fool gets into a constant fight. His mouth is his undoing. His words endanger him. How true is that? Um, Ironically, though, I'm even a man of God. Sometimes his words can endanger him in the more in the uh, in the in the uh, flesh sense. Nowadays, just like the guy I was talking about that lost his business, he was standing on moral ground, and it also costed him uh, carnally, but he gained spiritually, and that's kind of the trade-off sometimes in the world we're living in. What? Did, uh, what, what dainty morals rumors are, they are eaten with great relish. We seem to love the, uh, uh, the moral, moral rumors. Uh, the world is hungry for them because there's so little for them. The lazy man 
is brother to the saboteur. The Lord is a strong fortress. The godly run to him and are safe. How true is that? That's what we're doing right here in this scripture. You run to God in the morning and this you're safe here. This is a place where your brain becomes healed, your brain is fed. A rich man thinks of his wealth as an impregnable defense. A high wall of safety. What a dreamer. Uh, this of course, uh, what he, the only thing that's being defended is his carnal nature. And this is a fleeting thing, the carnal nature. It doesn't last very long. Pride ends in destruction. Humility ends in honor. We should all be humble. Uh, a humble life is a, a much better, happier life uh, filled with less strife. What a shame. Yes, how stupid to decide before knowing the facts. Uh, see this today. I know I feel like I'm bashing people in the world, but it's, it is what it is. Uh, today you got people that are, are pushing the uh, homosexual agenda uh, uh, very hard. And most people now will take up for the homosexual cause, not even knowing the case of the individual facts. Uh, it's like the bathroom thing that they, they want the homosexuals to be able to go into the uh, the bathrooms of uh, where children go of the opposite sex. And, uh, and, and they're all taken up for that, thinking they're taken up for a downtrodden people, the homosexuals. And really what it's doing is open the door to sexual deviants to go into the opposite bathrooms in the hopes of seeing the child's um, uh, uh, naked body uh, or in uh, being in that close personal contact space of a bathroom where people remove their clothes. Uh, and you got the whole world taken up for that bathroom uh, thing. And companies are all giving into it and putting on the doors that it's for men and women. They have no idea about the facts of who or what these people are and what their agenda is or what they're going in that bathroom for. So uh, that's a good model for that. We tend to, we tend to uh, decide uh, things before we even know the facts of what's going on. A man's courage can sustain his, his broken body. But when courage dies, what hope is left? Without... Uh, uh, without courage, uh, we can think of two different types of courage, one for spiritual and one for carnal. And the courage is, gives us the will and the ability to move. The intelligent man is always open to new ideas. In fact, he looks for them. Um, uh, this is a, an open-minded man we're talking about here. This is what makes you intelligent, actually. If you have a closed mind, even though you might think yourself smart because you have some book learning or that you've absorbed intelligent things that you want to absorb that fit your agenda, you're still not very intelligent because you shut out the other half of the world with, because your mind won't let those words that you're, uh, that you're seeing uh, be absorbed because you don't agree with certain things. We should, uh, we should open up our minds. Accept all the facts and make our decisions accordingly after we've absorbed all the, the information. A bribe does wonders. It will bring you before men of importance. Um, I got a little conflict with this. Uh, a bribe is to give somebody money in order to get them to turn ahead. That's how we think of it as a bribe. Uh, here it seems to put it in a positive uh, connotation. This is twice that this book has done this, and I think in a few days. So, But I'm going to leave that there where it is. I don't think a bribe can be a good thing, but uh, I guess in some instances it might get you over a hump and to a more important greater good. Who can say? Um, any story sounds true until someone tells the other side. And sets the record straight. How true is that? Um, a coin toss ends arguments and settles disputes between powerful opponents. It is hard to win back a friendship and, uh, of an offended brother than to capture a fortified city. His anger shuts you out like iron bars. 
And man, that's true. Uh, if you're getting into a spiritual argument with somebody, oh, that's good tea. If you get into a spiritual argument with somebody, uh, there's, I'm sure as I uh, say a lot of commentaries to these scriptures, there's somebody someday going to be going through this video and be at odds with the things that I say, just as I would be at odds uh, with the things that you might say. But the best thing, if when we're at odds, is to, to not so much talk as to listen. And, and that way you can absorb what's coming out. And then you can mull it over, chew the cud in your own mind, so to speak. And uh, uh, it's probably, a, that's the more humble way to look at it. Let's see, ability to give wise advice satisfies like a good meal. It's a good thing if you have uh, this scripture to stand on and you give out somebody advice and you know the advice is good because those seeds will take and it will make a difference in that person's life whether they accept it right then when you're standing face to face or if they accept it five years later. Uh, when you give them good sound advice, which always comes should always come from the Word of God, uh, that should be as satisfying as having a good meal because uh, the spiritual words are spiritual food. Those who love to talk will suffer for the consequences. Men have died for saying the wrong thing. My God, that's true. Uh, just look at the guy he's talking about, the cake baker. Um, he's, he spoke the right thing, and look how he suffered. So uh, who's to say well, if that guy would not have been better just by saying he was uh, sick and couldn't make that cake that day, he was going to be out of town that day. And he wouldn't be able to make the cake. It might have been a smarter way of handling that. And maybe he wouldn't have lost so much for a cause that the world will always be at odds with him for. Uh, or who's to say that maybe that was the right thing to do? I mean, it's, that's, that's a hard call. That guy, he's on my mind this morning. I don't know why, but I think about him from time to time. The man who finds a wife finds a good thing. She is a blessing to him from the Lord. My God, isn't that true? Um, the wife is a very most important. I told my kids when they were young, uh, the most important decision you're ever going to make is who you choose to be your betrothed because that's going to determine the next 15 to 20 years of your life. And true it is. So when you choose wives, when you choose husbands, make sure you choose somebody who has a reverence for the Lord. Uh, because if you don't, man, you're in for a bumpy ride. A poor man pleads, and a rich man answers with insults. Um, there are friends who pretend to be friends, but then there are friends who sticks closer than your brother. Um, I know uh, I have uh, friends. Uh, a dear friend of mine that passed on some years ago was closer than any brother or sister I ever had. And... Uh, I loved him dearly, and he died at 47 years of age, you know, many years back, and uh, he was a friend like that, that he would have been standing there with me uh, through thick and thin uh, before anybody else would have in my family. Uh, it's good to have a friend. There's no greater friend that any of us are going to have than this word we're reading right here, our friend Jesus Christ. Uh, but there, there are friends, there are comrades in arms and comrades in the Word of God that, uh, uh, that is a great blessing to us. <clears throat> that brings us to 19, so we're done with that. Uh, talking, staying in vain with this uh, Proverbs, you know, the friend thing is a, a very important uh, aspect of life. Uh, my goodness, life is so much better when you have when you have good friends and by the same proxy if you have bad friends life starts to get uh, pretty uh, pretty tough and then you you love these friends just like you would love a friend that's good for you so it, it, you tend to uh, hang out with them and uh, another proverb I was reading the other day gave the warning of how we become who and what we hang out with that's just human nature uh, we're, we're imitative human beings. We imitate. If we see something we admire, we tend to imitate it. And if your friend makes you laugh and have a lot of friends, but, it, but he makes you laugh at a lot of dirty jokes or, or, uh, or gory talk, 
then it tends to rub off on you. So uh, the friend thing is, uh, though it's one of the most important things in life, we have to be careful on who we choose for friends, just like we do for who we choose for husbands and wives. Makes a big difference. It is a glorious day out there. I think I'll go start out with throwing a few baits. See if I can't get a few bass fish to cooperate with me. And then I will start on with my work day. And then uh, uh, I'm hoping that everybody out there that uh, checked out this video this morning has a beautiful day, whatever day you may watch this video. And I hope you know that Jesus Christ is the Lord and King. I know some of you are just getting started thinking about God. And those pills are hard to swallow when people say things like that, that Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior. And I know that everybody has their, their carnal mind always chewing on them, always working on them, always you know, getting us to deny Jesus Christ. And uh, I know how it is to be in the flesh. I spend quite a lot of time in the carnal and flesh myself, as most people do. But don't give up on the thought that Jesus Christ is exactly who he said he was. He is the Lord God and Savior. He is God come to the human condition in the skin of human flesh. And by what he did on that cross, all that ails us can be taken away someday. You'll still suffer just like he still suffered on that cross. We'll still go through the pains of this life. But oh my God, at the end of this life, every wrong cross thing can be taken off of our ticket. Every horrible thing, pain we've ever gone through, every loss can all be erased through the power of Jesus Christ. And we must remember that. And when we don't believe it, we have to ask God to borrow some faith, to borrow some hope from him, to help us with our unbelief, as Paul did so bravely and courageously and had enough common sense to do. Now I'm just preaching, so I better get out here fishing. I love you. Come back again sometime and listen to uh, some more uh, reading of the scriptures. It's always good for what ails you, even if you're not ailing. It's always good to fortify with a little extra scripture, especially given the times that we seem to be living in today. We are coming to a point where... Uh, things are things are getting kind of creepy. In fact, I feel like talking about that more, but this video is long, so I may make another little short video right after this one uh, about uh, just what we see happening here of late uh, uh, in the world. It's a scary time, but with Jesus Christ, Jesus told us, don't fear those that can destroy our, our physical lives, but fear he you can destroy your physical life and your spiritual life. Fear God, because... God can make good everything that happens in your flesh life. The pain of dying, everything. God can fix all that. So let's, let's try to walk with God and get as close to him as we can by reading some scriptures every day and every night. I love you. Come back and see me sometime. Adios.